Hey golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. A uh, special guest today. He's been on several episodes, a couple, um, several YouTube videos, several things. Uh, Larry Bobka, legendary club builder, club fitter, second swing. Uh, True. That, extraordinary. Just make, that just makes me old, you know. Turned 64 a couple weeks ago, so I'm feeling old right so, now. So, well, that wouldn't be lying. That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> Um, good to have you in here. Uh, how are, how are things going for you? How's the start to, I guess, the prime golf season of 2024 treating Larry Bobka? Uh, pretty good. Pretty good from a work standpoint. As you know, I've been battling a little health issue, but that's on the, that's on the back burner now. It's getting better. There so, you go. That's so good. yeah, things are, things are getting better. I'm feeling better. And, um, you know, it's been a very hectic spring. In, in like fitting, a good way? In a good way, yeah. yes. With with fittings and uh, the desire for people to upgrade their golf equipment. Um, I think one of the things that we're seeing is a lot of players that got in it during the COVID years mm. have now... It's time to hooked, upgrade. Yeah, kind of hooked on the game. Time to upgrade. Time to look at something a little bit different. Um, you know, just, just a lot of people that are all of a sudden are now kind of going, hey... Um, I really like this. There's there's technology out there. Um, I think one of the things that we've done in Second Swing, especially here in, you know, in all the stores, but especially here in Minneapolis and Minnetonka, you know, we've really upgraded um, what we've done from the fitting standpoint. And um, you know, people when they come get fit, they they think of us first, and yeah, that's that's exactly what we wanted. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm I'm monitoring the. Uh google reviews as they pile in and, and uh it seems like you know there's more and more five star reviews every single day so that's kudos to obviously you guys as the fitters um it's because that's obviously the core part of improving golfers and how they score and everything so well in, that in terms too, of what we do yeah and i think too i think also over the last you know uh, i'm going i'm getting close to five years here at second swing um We've really upgraded our selection of product that's in store. You know, our big kind of thinks, well, second swing, oh, it's all used golf clubs. Yeah, you got to come inside, come inside right. the store, and there, there's you know a lot of new clubs that, because of what we, the conversations between the purchasing department and the and the fitters, you know, we put a lot of things in, you know, a lot of clubs in there, that hey, we can we'll fit you and go. Oh, by the way, you know what? I got one of these in the store. You can take yeah. it home with you. Right. You know, and especially with our play guarantee, I think that really helps uh, people, you know, get some product, get in their hands right. Especially, you know, here in, you know, the upper Midwest, you know, the golf season, you know, it can get cut short pretty fast. Yes, it can. You know, we had a warm, we had a warm winter. Now we've had a rainy spring, mm -hmm. you know, and who knows, who knows if we're going to have an early fall and a right. early winter. And we're, we're never going to master that, uh, you no. know, the, no. you know, we're never going to know exactly what the forecast is right. going to hold. But um, I we'll, we'll get more to some of those misconceptions maybe about second swing, because I okay. know, you know, we'll, as we get into kind of the conversations that of some of the recent fittings that you've had. Yep. Um, and then I know there's one other topic I want to talk about the end to related to kind of wedge fitting. But okay. um, I kind of want to first dive into, you know, you've had some big names in your fitting bay the last, I guess, week or so, maybe week or two weeks. Uh, yeah. The last, last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's not unusual for you and well, Mr. Aaron Roth in there as well. You guys Correct. both bring in Correct. some big names, whether it's in the golf community or maybe the local Minnesota sports scene here. But, um, you know, the big name we could start kind of with, you know, we had Tom Lehman in there. Yeah. You know, major champion, major champion, yeah. won, won some other tour events, great player, great guy. Um, you know, it, it kind of, it was kind of interesting cause it, it kind of happened. Um, Aaron Roth, who you mentioned, uh, played golf and saw his son at Windsong. Yeah. And, you know, his son, Sam, man, I just, you know, my dad's really struggling with his irons and he was really looking for some help. And so Aaron gets on the phone and calls me. I mean, this is like seven, eight o'clock at night on Friday. And he goes, Hey, he goes, you got any openings tomorrow? And I said, well, you know, I always have my lunch. I can always, you yeah. know, for Tom Lehman, I'll, I'll skip lunch. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And, um, but I had a, I had a, I actually had an hour before that. And I said, yeah, I said, you know what? I can block, I'll block from 12 to two off and uh, see what he wants to do. So 
you know, he confirms in the morning. He comes in and, you know, he walks in the store and everybody's kind of looking like, geez, that guy looks like Tom Lehman. <laughs> looks like Tom Le Well, yeah, it is Tom Lehman. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he had kind of, you know, a full button shirt. I mean, he wasn't really even dressed like a golfer. But, <laughs> you know, the minute he picks up the club, you can tell he's a golfer. Oh, yeah, I, I imagine so, yeah. So. so so Tom walks in and when I was driving in the work in the morning, I'm like, man, when's the last time, when's the last time I worked with him? And it was actually, it was 2001. He had come into the Titleist test facility when I was running golf club promotion for Titleist because he wanted to do a ball fitting because he was struggling with the Pro V1 oh, sure. Pro V1 change, you know, from wound balls to a solid golf ball. And then I'll tell a little story about it in a second. But so I said, Tom, I said, geez, I haven't seen you since 2001. You know, we worked on golf balls. He goes, that's right. And I go, I remember you pulled into, you pulled into Oceanside with your VW Eurobus. He looks at me and he goes, how in the world do you remember that? I go, because the tour player's driving a VW Eurobus. Yeah, you're going to we, remember that. We're going to remember that. <laughs> and he looks yeah. at me and he goes, I still got it. I still got the bus 24, wow. 23 years later. Okay. Okay. But he told the story. He said, you know, the reason, he, reason that he contacted me and set it up was because he was playing the last hole of the last round. He wasn't really in contention. And he hit an eight iron at Southern Hills to the uphill green. And he goes, I flew it 15 yards over the green with Pro V1. He goes, eh, this might not be my golf ball. Yeah. <laughs> so that, you know, so that was the last time we really worked on stuff. So, you know, it, it's easy to it's easy to work with somebody that you've got a former relationship with. He's comfortable with me. I'm comfortable with him. And, you know, so then you just start doing a fitting and you, you know, really go, you know, hey, Tom, where are you at? What are you doing? Yeah. You know, he's he's a year older than I am, so he's 65, but he's still in great shape, still swinging the golf club with speed, still hitting it really good. And, um, you know, then you kind of, as, as a typical fitter and especially a fitter of, you know, tour players, you kind of slide things in here and there and you don't say anything. Yeah, yeah. And, and, um, and as usual, a tour player picks it up and, you know, I, I threw in a, a little bit lighter shaft and he goes... The shaft's lighter. <laughs> I mean, he takes one swing with it, and he's like, "Yeah, this is lighter." That's got to be fun to have that relationship with some of these, you know, uh, these men and women that obviously are so dialed in. Where, and you also have the like the good rapport with them, where you can just for fun throw something in there as a kind of right. a test and see if they'll even notice. Because uh, some of those things, I don't know if. I mean, a vast majority of golfers probably wouldn't pick up on that stuff just by grabbing it. No, uh, not usually not on ten grams. They'll pick up maybe fifteen to twenty grams. Okay, yeah. But you throw you throw you know five to ten grams on a tour player, and they're like, "Well, this just this doesn't feel right." Right. Yeah. You know, this doesn't feel good. Interesting. You know, did you did you give me this because I'm older? I'm like Tom, you're as old. You know, we're the same age. <laughs> we're virtually the same age. Yeah. You know, I I understand. Um, the nice thing was he was he was really interested in Strix on irons. Okay. He had seen them out on tour. He had seen some guys playing them. He really liked the look of them. You know, he, he's playing an old, still playing an older set of like burner tours from really from TaylorMade, and they're a little bit weaker lofted. And he goes, I'm just he goes, I'm just not hitting them anywhere. They don't mm -hmm. feel like I'm hitting them solid. So we actually, you know, we started with ZX7. And he's like, man, that's okay. The numbers were pretty good. And then he's like, he goes, what else I got? And I brought the five, and I put the five together, handed it to him, and he looked at it, and he goes, I like that. Really? Yeah, so he liked the shape of the five better. He launches it pretty high, so it actually brought the launch down a little bit, kept the spin the same, and, you know, he picked up picked up a couple yards, maybe yeah. three or four yards. But, you know, he was carrying, you know, now he's carrying seven iron about 162, and he goes, man, he goes, I'm – he goes, my irons now. He goes, I'm lucky if I hit it 150 wow. with my 7 iron. So and he this, was really playing like an old he, Yeah, burner playing an tour old set? set of burner set, dynamic old X100s. Wow. We did not change. He did. We still ended up in dynamic old X100s. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because, again, I tried to slip a 120 in there, and he's like, oh, my God, this feels too light. I'm like, That's kind of fascinating that he hadn't switched irons in that long. No wild no and he said you know he goes I, he goes i really don't like to switch clubs too much he goes because i really feel like if if they're not working it's me and he goes mm -hmm. i just he goes i've never he goes i've never been one of those guys that that does this massive search that you know i play good for a while and then all of a sudden i play bad and he goes maybe he goes 
more likely I do it on a driver than anything else. And then, uh, so the Strix on Tour department's building the clubs. Okay. I gave them all the specs, uh, but they're not gripping them because he was very particular about how he wanted his grips going on. And I got, I got it. I can handle it. Okay. And so I'm going to finish it. And he also likes his lot a little bit custom on the loft and lies. Um, so, yeah, so I'll just, I'll do the loft and lie, do the gripping, and then send mm. it to him. So, wow. But still, I mean, that's still really cool. That's, it's not often you can get a major champion in the, yeah. uh, in the store, it's I mean, what I, it's but, what I've, but I know it's what it, I've done since 1984. I know so. what happens for you, and you're like it's not it's not like it's some, uh, you know, once in a lifetime like moment for you because I know that's what your career was, for, right? I mean, your job was for right. a long time. Yeah, uh, but it's fun. It's fun to have guys in there like that. That you know that especially they're looking for some help, getting a little bit old. They're they're just like everybody that you know. Hey, ball speed's going down a little bit. Not hitting it quite yeah. as solid. Looking for a new feel, looking for something new. I mean, in fact, he he texted he texted me yesterday, and he's like, "Hey, any update on the clubs?" Yeah. And you know, I told him probably take a few weeks between them, and then you know, I, I the said, building I, it for yourself. I said, yeah. yeah, I said as soon as I get them, I'll you know, I'll turn them around and I'll turn them around in half a day. It is funny. It's kind of like I mean, in, in a sense, he's also just like any other golfer you fit because they're eager to get the clubs oh, and yeah. you know they're yeah. Yeah. where's my cu- yeah where's exactly. my custom order i want you know exactly. i know you fit me yesterday but i really <laughs> want them now so right. um yeah but it's good you know and, and and he walked away he was very happy sent me a very very nice text message and um you know and, and he, how do you not help somebody like that you know yeah. and and to me it's just it's just, it really is just another customer the nice thing about it is it's a little bit easier on my side because i know he knows the feels. He yeah. knows what he wants. He hasn't worked together before, right? Anything, and he's know. and he's specific on you know, hey, this is these these are the irons I want to look at. Yeah. I mean, we even tried that. We even tried the ZX4. He goes, oh, wow. they, he goes, they have anything else? I go, well, like I go, they got a rocket launcher, <laughs> and yeah. he hit it. But he actually hit the fours pretty well. He didn't like the shape of the four, okay. and it didn't spin enough. So we lost, we yeah. lost, we lost. That some, doesn't surprise me. Though. Yeah, we lost some spin on the okay. four. So for him, for him, where he's at, he really can't afford to lose any spin. And the five was good. The seven spun a little bit more, but he didn't like the shape as okay. much. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. it is cool though, because like I, I wonder. You know, obviously, Tom's been a great ambassador for the game just in Minnesota. Oh, well, he's, um, le- he's a legend here so, in Minnesota. So, right, exactly, and. Obviously, he's like into designing courses now, and he's designed some really good ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's just cool to have him just come in, in quote right, in quotations. But as a regular yeah. golfer, getting fit by yeah. one of our fitters, um, and then like, did you notice a difference between his like? I, I, I'm curious, just on someone of his caliber and obviously experience, where they were were a really good tour player, and then now they're in this bay with the TrackMan technology and all the numbers and everything. Was he? interested in that stuff because i feel like as we kind of well i know we'll talk about rocco but i know he seems a lot more he's into the numbers into the data a ton right. is this tom as much or not no really? tom's not as much he goes you know he goes what what was his line uh i've hit on one of these things before yeah you know so he's not really he's more a ball flight guy yeah you know he's more interested about because you know hey that's that's what he grew up playing i mean right you know there was no technology mm-hmm. back in the day but you know he understood he understood launch and spin um he understood you know one of the things that i think he's from and i don't know who he works with swing wise but he understands the path he was so it was really launch and spin in the path and in his path numbers swing yeah, the swing yeah his data. swing numbers that you know he looked at and he's like interesting you know because he hit one and he's like oh man i dropped that inside i dropped that way inside and you know Instead of being like four to five in and out, it was like six, and it's you know it was like one more degree. And right. Like, yeah. Oh, but I he dro- can feel oh, that. Oh, I dropped that. Yeah, yeah, I dropped that one way inside. Interesting. Um, okay. So yeah, so not not nearly as much as not nearly as much as somebody like Rocco. Is right. Because yeah. Rocco hits so many balls in there, and he's you know he's really attuned to what happens with the track yeah. man. Yeah, because we, you know, I he I know I actually witnessed some one of these kind of sessions that you and Rocco have had before and he was in the other right. day as well yep. here. And so another one that you work with pretty frequently and yep. he's steps he stops in both up here and then also down in, in Scottsdale yep. Goes, as well. Yeah, uh, Mike Biviano and I have yep. 
Jeez, probably both of us have, have helped him for 35 years, yeah. maybe. Long time. Yeah. And uh, Long time. so what what was that session like? I mean, I guess because we, we started to kind of compare and contrast the two between, right. you know, Tom. I know he, Rocco typically likes to kind of come in and tune stuff up and make sure things are lining up numbers wise. Is that yeah, kind of well, what it he, was for the most part? Yeah, Rocco texted because, you know, he, he splits time between between Scottsdale and here yeah. and uh, texted. And he's been he's been out with a back injury yeah, for okay. a while. So he was just coming off the back injury. We both actually share a chiropractor here in, <laughs> in Excelsior. I'm going to give a plug to my Dr. Mark Hope. If you're, you're a golfer and you got a bad back, go see the man. All right. He's one of the best. Um, so we, yeah, so we, we, sh yeah, actually Rocco put him on to me for my back and then, you know, he really does a nice job. So he wanted to start hitting some balls and he had made some changes. He had put some graphite iron shafts in his oh, iron okay. to get a little bit lighter to see if it could help his back a little bit more. He went a little bit longer. He actually went half inch long. And then he had a few other drivers because he's always monkeying with drivers. He's yes. always trying, always trying to find something. You know, he was a G four hundred guy forever, but you know, as we know, those those heads are becoming extinct. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, that's so, a long time though. Yeah. So he wanted he wanted to hit he wanted to hit those and um, you know and just kind of see where he's at and see how he's feeling and. Um, yeah, and he's he's just fun to hang around. Great stories, and oh yeah, he's got he's got great insight um, to to clubs and club design, and you know he's the he he would be the kind of guy that when we were at Titleist and he was on Titleist staff, when we came up with something new, he'd be one of the guys you'd hand it to. You know, one of the few that you pick and go, hey, hit this for me. Mm. Because okay. he'd probably give real, like, he would give he you gives, every he, ounce of feedback. Well, he gives needed. the great feedback, but he's also swung the, the golf club the same way forever. I mean, there's really never been much change in his golf swing other than some positions here and there. Yeah. And, you know, he got a little flatter. Now we're going back to more upright. Okay, so. okay. But he knows, he knows what a club does for him. You know, he immediately hits it and goes, well, that's not going to work. That's, you know, yeah. here's what I see. Here's what I don't like. Here's what I like. So yeah, yeah. For so from my standpoint, it's always great to have a rapport like that. I mean, you know, the other guy that through the years a Titleist and UST and stuff has been Marco Mero, who's been a mm. great friend for forever. I mean, that'd be the you know mo. It's like, hey, try this out. Try these. You know, we're doing Vokey wedge groove testing. Try those hmm. because he because he just plays the same way. Yeah, and and has a feel for doing it. You know. And when we started UST, uh, had a great relationship with Lanny Watkins. You know, same thing. I mean, there's a guy that try this, try yep. this, tip it here, do this, whatever, and can give you fantastic feedback. Yeah, because I think I, I, I'm trying to, I guess, not having obviously talked to a ton of tour players about this type of thing, but I imagine Rocco is kind of where the modern tour player is now in the sense that we did – I think it was two years ago we did a What's in the Bag video with Rocco mm -hmm. at Minnetonka. Um, it's, you know, again, you talk about great insight and stories and stuff. I mean, right. go check that out on our YouTube channel if you haven't yet. But he totally knows exactly the type of drive he wants to see. He wants to see mid-2000 spin with a high draw. Right. And then he talked about his irons in the bag at the time. It was the new, I think it was I-230s maybe he had just I put in. I-230s at the time, um, yeah. And he talked about all the spin that he needs. And he's like, I can, you know, this three iron, I can spin, I can stop it on top of your head right now. You know, that type of thing. Yeah. So he's like, those are the, he knows exactly what he wants. Right. And I imagine it's something similar on tour now where you get guys like maybe you're working with Glover, not necessarily on maybe his full game or right. long game. But, yeah. you know, he's like, I want to see, you know, this type of shot with this spin rate on my four iron. Right. right. And they know exactly all that stuff because of the, technology they have right. right on the driving range yeah and, and you know and, and the other thing too is 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 you sit there and you know especially when i worked with lucas when i was living down in florida you know you go on the range and we'd work on his putting but you know work on his long game he's like hey i got this shaft or they sent me this driver and i want to try this and i want to try that but you immediately know if 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 they can't create the ball flight and their golf swing looks fine then there's something wrong with the tool in their hand. Yeah. There's something wrong with the shaft. Is it too stiff? Is it too? Is it not stiff enough? You know, do we not have enough? Did they not give you enough loft in the driver? What it is? Because 
because after three swings, if they look at it and they can't create the flight, they're not going to try to create the flight because the last thing you want in your bag is if I've got 13 swinging clubs and 12 of them perform well with my golf swing and I have to make, I have to make a different swing mm -hmm. with that other club, that's a bad thing. Right. Because that, that leads to, oh, my gosh, I put a good swing on it, and now it's going left in the water. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, that right. gets that gets expensive on tour. It does, it does. Yeah, that's the I know that's the element you've talked about before. Is just like with some of these guys, it's it's different than just with any amateur golfer in the sense that they're playing for lots of money on professional right, tours, and right. you know something wrong with their club can be a big deal. And I know, like you've mentioned in the past, working with Davis Love or or Payne or whoever it might have been on a new club in the bag in a major tournament, and you're kind of watching on TV, like just don't. I don't want my club to be oh, scared, screwing them up. It scares, yeah, it scared, scared the hell out of me. Yeah. You know, you really, I mean, you're doing your job because, you know, whether it was being Wilson or Titleist or even Shafts at UST, you know, you're trying to get something in the bag. I mean, you're trying to help your company, your business, your job, you know, you're trying to do your job. But on the other side of that, you got to remember that, you know, you're, you're dealing with this, you know, this player, but that's his own corporation. Yeah. And now you're helping another business yeah. succeed, and you sit there and you kind of go, I know it's been good on the range. I know it's been good in right. the practice round, but, oh, my gosh, is it going to – No, those shots don't gonna, matter. Is, yeah, is he going to play well on Thursday? Yep. Is he going to play well if he gets in the hunt on Sunday, and is he going to drive the ball well with it on Sunday? So, you know, those are all the things that, you know, people watch golf tournaments and go, man, this is great. And I'm like, man, don't it – you know, nothing fall apart. Don't hit one – 30 yards off line right, right, right. and then the commentators go well you know he put a new driver in the bag this week and <laughs> you know it doesn't seem to have very good control of it and you're like oh my word I, you know kind of want you kind of don't want to go to work on monday right yeah but um yeah it's a it's a little different but it's still you know it's still at the end of the day i mean you know we're doing this this morning and you know i've got my i got my chaska league at 3 30 this afternoon yeah. to go play golf and uh, so, you know, hey, I want stuff, you know, I like having stuff in my bag that flies good. And my buddies that, you know, everybody that everybody that I play with, I, I fit them. So, you know, so you, you kind of watch their games, too. And you don't want to have somebody buy a new driver. And all of a sudden they stand on the first tee and they hit, right. it, they hit it in the driving range on number one. I mean, you know, I, I, feel, I feel as bad about that as if I felt bad that, you know, I fit a a, fit a tour player and they hit a bad shot right you know yeah because like because the tour players get in the club for nothing yeah that's my true. guys, guys my, guy, my, my guys are, my guys are paying for it yeah yeah that's true because there's a certain element i know too like you talked about that it was nice getting back in with tom and obviously rocco too where you know these guys you've worked with them before and now you can kind of build that up too with just any any customer you know right. that's what you've been doing since you started at second swing is kind of working with you know, the same player over and over in the sense of they'll come back, tweak, update. And you know with those guys too now and gals that if they, you know, how they swing, how they play, what they need. And so as that relationship builds, it's only right. easier for you and any other fitter in the same situation here. Well, and, you know, and the, and the nice thing too is like I've met, actually had a, actually had a dad and a son when I was in Scottsdale fly down from Canada. Really? To get fit, to get fit by me. Because he knows who I am and the reputation, and so brought his son down. Son takes lessons from George Gankus. Okay. Okay. So he's yeah, into yeah. it. Good player. Nice, nice kid too. Great kid to work with. And you know, so I I worked with him on his golf equipment, and you know, he texted me this morning, said, "Hey, you know, son's doing great. The clubs are working good. You know." thinking about this or that maybe adding something into his bag you know and that's the kind of rep that's the kind of rapport you build with people but mm -hmm. you know this kid is you know 15 years old yeah could be the you know he's a next could be a next generation tour player you know enjoy that i mean you know another perfect example we've had you know ben warian yeah i was gonna you bring know, him up too he's he just doing had, really just well had a fabulous fabulous year at um at the gophers Went to NCAA, went to the championship as an individual. But there's a kid that right before the start of all those tournaments came in and spent about an hour and a half with me, and we went through 
every club in the bag, made sure the loft and lie was correct, made sure the gapping was correct. He was struggling with his three wood, and he's like, man, I think I need a new three wood. And I'm like, no, dude, you just need a new setting. I go, who put this in the setting? He goes, I did. I go, that's not your job. I go, well, I was trying to get this. And I go, yeah, but you were doing it the wrong way. So he actually had it in lower loft, and he had the, you know, it was a QI-10 yeah. with the sliding weight. Well, oh, the weight, so he had it in lower loft and the weight back trying to get in the air. I'm like, no, I would just loft it up, put the weight forward to keep the spin down, hit some shots with it, and after he got through after he got through the regionals, he sent me a note, and he's like, man, he goes, the loft and lies were just spot on, and he goes, that three wood was absolute money. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, you know it, it, it's 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 working with the next generation. You never know where the next generation comes from. Yeah, you know um, we got a kid here in Minnesota, uh, Jake Birdwell, who's going to Illinois. Mm-hmm. Really good player, maybe arguably the best player in the state. High school players right now, and you know, but it's it's fun to work with those kids. It's fun to work with the kids. It's fun to work with, you know, Tom Lehman at sixty five years old who still is trying to play better golf yeah you know and that's all we're trying to do that's the fun part about the game everybody's trying to get better all the time yeah um last one too i want to hit on was uh jen huber that yeah stopped by uh yeah. so for those who don't know she's the she's a head pro she's at the, she's, uh, the, sorry. Te- she's the one of the new teaching pros at hazel that's team. right she was at braymar she has played the tour in the lpj yeah. tour in the past and you know Teaches a lot of juniors. She's she is absolutely fabulous teaching juniors, and so she came in or she texted me and she's like, "Hey, do you have a little bit of time?" And she came in on Monday, another one of my days off. So don't worry about me working on my days <laughs> off because I do it all the time. I said, "Yeah." I said, I'm "For context, pl- everybody, I said, Larry's, I'm playing- Larry's, Larry's recording this on his day off." So, so I was, I'm playing. Yeah. I'm playing Monday morning, and that's her only day off. And I'm like. Jen, I said, you know, I got a nine o'clock tea time. I can get there by, can get there by two thirty. Yeah. So perfect. So we go to Minnetonka, because she wants to play in some events. She had worked a little bit. She's playing tricks on clubs, and she had worked a little bit with with their with their local rep. Got something, but she's just like, you know, I need to dial these in a little bit. I've got some gaps. I'm, you know, can you help me with a three wood? So it, it's good to have players like that that come in. And because she still wants to play better, you know, now that she's at Hazeltine, Hazeltine wants her to play, yeah. you know. I mean, that's great reputation for them that they have players that go out and play and play well. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it, it, you know, so she's in a different situation where she was before. It's like they didn't really care about her playing. Now they care about her playing. And she's a heck of a player. She's just done, she laughs, she's just done spin the ball. I mean, we were, we were. Oh, yeah. She sent me a text. She goes, oh, my gosh. She goes, I got, she sent me some track man numbers from yesterday. And she's like. I went over the top and dug the earth out to get these spin rate numbers because <laughs> she just drops it a little bit inside. Yeah, and yeah. It gets kind of shallow. And it's tough to get spin that way. And yeah. So yeah. So she sent me this text with laughing face, going, "Yeah, I felt like I had to go over the top and dig a right. ditch to, <laughs> to get these numbers." What, where does she fall on the on the spectrum of, uh, you know, Tom Lehman, who's kind of ball flight oriented kind of and, and feel versus Rocco with dialed in on the numbers. I would say, I would like say Jen's a lot closer to Tom Lehman. Okay. It's more about ball flight. Yeah. You know, it's more about ball flight. It was more, she was more concerned with height um, and the ability to stop irons yeah. on the green. I suppose that makes sense that she was kind of struggling with the spin. Making yeah. Making sure that can yeah. happen. So okay. she's kind of there, you know, she, you know, cause they work with track man and she knows track man numbers, but, in her own game, less concerned about that, more concerned about more concerned about how oh, the ball sure. how the ball flies. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, it's, it's just it's fascinating watching you recall all these things. I mean, I know these are recent fittings, but you could probably do this with any fitter that or any fitting that you've had and oh. dial in everything. the The memory bank inside Larry Bobka's brain. <laughs> well, you know, I I tell people sometimes we get we get players in and they launch it a little low and they spin it with their driver, you know, and they're like, well. You know, I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to 14 to. You're not going to get there. That's not your golf swing. You're going to hit down on everything a little bit. And I said, hey, I said, let me let me relay a story. I don't know if I've ever told the story before, but we're going from 975D to 975J back in the day at Titleist. Okay. You know, okay. 
So now all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're doing this testing. We set up at a golf course close to colonial. Oh, sure. Okay. Because we want to do the testing. So, so, you know, David Duvall comes in the time and Duvall at the time was number one or number two. And, you know, just walked the practice round with him in the morning and hit every fairway, just absolutely dead straight. So hits the first drive with the new driver and it, it, and it, it launches, it's like 171, and launches at 8 and spins at 2,900. And just does this every time. He's like, yeah, I kind of like this. And one of the engineers looks at me and he goes, quietly goes, hey, you going to talk to him? Well, what, am yeah. I, what do you want to talk to him about? Well, he should launch it higher and spin it less. Okay. I just walked 18 holes with the man. And he hit every fairway. You know, right down, right down the sprinkler line. Yeah, he's the number one player in the world. He's only got one play. He's only got one place to go, and that's not that's, up. That's down. That, that's down. <laughs> I said I am not going to change it. Now, if he starts struggling with the driver a little bit, we can have that discussion. But till that time happens, I'm not going to yeah. have that discussion. So you have to, you know, you kind of have to look at your players, and you have to kind of see what they can do and can't do. So as a fitter, whether it's Tom Lehman or Rocco or David Duvall or, you know, Mr. Smith or Mrs. Mm -hmm. Smith that are coming in for a fitting, you know, what can they physically do and how do I put them into the best club to maximize what they do? Now, you can have that discussion going, hey, you know, you've been taking any lessons. This is one of the things that's hurting your driving a little bit. You know, you might want to work with somebody. So, you know, we yeah. uh, we send we send people to see Eric Childs at Chaska. I send them to see yep. Jeff Otto at Bluff Creek. Yeah, and um, and that helps them a lot. But you can only do what you can do. Yeah, you well, know that's like that's like me now. I mean, you know, two artificial hips, a little fat, a little <laughs> old. You know, I, I can only create the speed I can create. You know, I'm not going to hit it. I'm not going to hit it for any further because it's just not going to go. But yeah. do I hit it on the center of the face all the time? Yeah, I'm pretty good at hitting it yeah, on the do. center of the face. So the thing about it is you just you have to understand that, you know, you can't walk in the bay. I mean, I can't walk in the bay and, say, walk in there one day, one morning, we're warming up and go, you know, we're getting ready and walk over to Aaron's bay and go, Aaron, geez, I, I want a driver that I can carry t- I can carry 260. He'll just look at me and laugh. He goes, it's not possible. Yeah. It, because it's not. Because I can't <laughs> I can't create that speed. But it's maximizing what you can do. It's maximizing what you can do. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what you have that's what you have to put in the golf bag is you have to put clubs in there. I mean, if you're struggling with a club, you know, probably one of the biggest struggle clubs right now is three woods. You know, yeah. they're longer, yeah. the faces are faster, they don't spin as much. Hey, if you're struggling with a three wood, first of all, don't hit it. Don't even carry it if you can't hit it right. very well. Or come in and find a club that's going to launch higher and better. You know, I've gone to a 3HL. I've yeah. gone to a 16.5 three-wood. I can't hit a 15-degree three-wood in the air. I mean, I just, you know, is me also. I just I just had Nimbrad made me, make me a woodwood, too. Oh, yeah, sure. But he made me a three-wood with 17, 17 degrees of loft. So both of my my metal three wood and my persimmon three would both have about seventeen degrees yeah. aloft because that's that's what I can hit in the air. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you that's know? a that's it's the reality one of, those things. of it. It's like I, I saw I was looking through I mentioned the Google ratings and one of them was from, from a fitting with uh, Kevin Kraft in Maryland and the guy was super appreciative of the fact that Kevin uh, it was a long game fitting but Kevin basically told him we don't even need. To do work on the driver right now like you can you basically more or less told them before we have you spend money on a new driver let's get that swing optimized a little bit more right you know they worked on a hybrid and they got fit for a hybrid or whatever but it's like like just because you come in for a fitting we're not it's not about selling a club that day it's about that relationship that we've talked about building that over over time coming back in and, right. and it's a process from there continual well, it, process yeah it is i mean a perfect example um Another Hazel team member, Jessica Munson, who's the who's been the club champion at Hazel team, and she came out and did. We did full bag, 
but not right away. Okay, so we did irons, put yeah. her in, put her in new I five thirties. She had she had these Adams irons that she absolutely loved, but I'm like, Jess, you're just killing yourself. <laughs> she got so she got she got I five thirties, loves them. We did a we did a, a driver three wood, five wood, seven wood in the new QIs. Mm. Hits it great. In fact, when she got the driver the first day, she went out and played it. Sent me a text message. She goes, "I'm the second hole. I can't find my drive. It's 25 yards farther than where I normally <laughs> drive it." I said, "Okay, <laughs> because it's better launch conditions, better speed, and better yeah. spin." So she's excited. But we didn't do the wedges. We didn't do the wedges till she got the new irons in. Found out how far that pitching. Oh, sure. So then we did the we just did the wedges on Saturday. Yeah. So she went with a the a new set of the i fifty i fifty nines from mm -hmm. Ping, fifty fifty five and sixty, and absolutely loves them. And you know she not a big fan of a sixty, but out at Hazeltine you really need a sixty out there because of the bunkering and the deep grass around sure. the greens. It's pretty yeah, tough. Gouge it out. It's, yeah. You know. Yeah. That's that's a that's a golf course that demands a high lofted mm. wedge. So. That's guys. I'm gonna lead that lead into kind of that wedge fitting thing. I okay. was gonna because we talked about the wedge fitting there a little bit. Um, I was having a discussion with our friend Tyler Fitzel, who we yep. actually did a YouTube live the other day, and um, he was mentioning sort of the you know we were talking a little bit about kind of wedge fitting indoors versus you know and how you guys manipulate around that and and obviously get people into the wedges they they need based on being indoors. And so can you kind of like how does that work with with golfers how do you effectively fit you know in that scenario because i think i think the perception is that well you can't fit wedges indoors and and probably some element of that is a, a little true in the sense you don't get the turf interaction piece but i right. guess in terms of that process how do you go through that with a player well if you, you do and you know and jessica is a perfect example okay so we've got a set of irons that go now probably 12 yards further mm -hmm. maybe even 15 yards further than what she had before so we need to throw that 50 in there. She never had a 50. She oh, always yeah. had always had a 52. Well, now the I-530 to the 52 created this gap. So we go to a 50, and, you know, it's pretty pretty standard fair. You know, it, this is a fairway club. Um, I like the new ping one because it's got about 12-degree bounce. vokey has got a 12-degree. You know, pretty much everybody has about a 12-degree, 50-degree yeah. club, which, you know, back in my day was called a pitching wedge. Yes. Not a gap wedge. Yeah, things have changed. Since things then. have changed since then, since the old days. <laughs> so, you know, I, so me, it's really you know, okay. So now here's your new pitching wedge, but it's a gap wedge, whatever. So what's the next club? But you got to gap it. You know, you you have to you have to gap them out there where I like to see about 15 yards in between wedges, because if you're not, you're hitting that last wedge too far. Because say she's hitting her. If she hits her, if she hits her pitching wedge 125, and then we go 115, 105, 95. Yeah, that, that's that's not enough. That's not a golf game. I, I mean, I want that last club for her to go maybe about 85 yards. Yeah, right. So uh, so now I've created. You're kind of looking for what 12 to 15 probably. Yeah, between. and I've created some space that now when she gets a yardage, okay, it's this wedge. I might have to take a little bit off it, or I might have to hit a little bit harder. But she's harder. probably good enough, or she has a shot for that. Right, you know, and you're not confused. You, I mean, you know what? And honestly, pretty much everybody does. Yeah. You know, they pretty much understand wedges. You know, I had, a, I had a guy yesterday, and he's like, he's like, yeah, he goes, you know, I really need some. I'm going, yeah, because you're driving at 305. <laughs> how many golf? How many golf holes do you play where you hit a club more than eight iron into a green? Yeah. I mean, eight iron to eight iron to lob wedges. That's those are your money shots. Yeah, you're not probably hitting a lot of six irons or five not irons hitting a lot if you're hitting of six it that or five. Tee. You're hitting those either on long par threes or you're hitting them on par fives. Right. So you you know it's it's really important to have the bottom end of the bag zeroed in. You know, I, I always kind of like I always kind of like the thought. To me, you know, we always talk about sometimes less than fourteen, not playing fourteen club. Yeah. You know, to me, the perfect set is. I got three. I got three woods or three metals. I got three wedges, and then I just need a few irons in between to have it. You know, you can play with about ten clubs. You know, and Dave Pell's in his book, you know, the short game bible. 
there's a, there's a whole section on there where he tested tour players, and they took half their irons out of the bag, but they left their woods and they left their wedges, and you know what? Didn't change their score. Didn't change. Yeah, their, well, that's because, didn't change their scores at all. I mean, how many? You know, you're gonna use your six iron, for example, once around maybe two times, right? Depending on and how if the you don't have a out, seven right. iron, you just take a little bit less right. off your six. Iron. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so when it comes to wedges to get back on the point, it's important to gap them out distance wise. Okay. Then from there, it's really the conversation about, okay, if, if, if we're doing in, in with Jess, we ended up with 50, the 56 actually went to 55 right. and then 60. So, with that 55, I, I asked her, I said, do you really hit it? Do you hit a lot of shots? She goes, well, no, it's really the club. Maybe I do a little bit of chipping with, but it's definitely, you know, I need this. I really need a shot from about, I need, really need a shot from about, you know, 90 yards. Yeah. And I don't have a 90-yard club. Well, now we give her. So, you know, she she doesn't really use that around the green much. No, no. Yeah. It's more of a full swing club. Yeah, it's more of a full swing. Then you start talking. Then you get into the the highest lofted, whether it's 58 or 60. You know, how's your bunker play? How's your bunkers at your club? Where do you play? You know, what what do you like to do with it? Do you like to open it? Do you like to keep it square? So you can accomplish a lot of that, you know, what's needed in the the wedge field just based on the discussion of how you use Yeah, and it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's the same thing if a tour player, when, you know, worked for Titleist, came in at Oceanside. And you start talking about, and you're working with them for the first time, and you start talking about what you're you're asking the same questions. Yeah. You know, what do you do with it? How do you do it? You know, how do you hit these? What do you want to do? You know, and it, and it comes back from the days back at Wilson. You know, sitting there with Sevy and grinding grinding the back of wedges off, and he's hitting them on these black mats, yeah. looking to see where the contact point is, and he's like, Mm-mm, take a little more here, take a little more, here. take a little more, <laughs> you know. And then he walks out with three wedges that were, you know, that were, you know, really nice looking wedges, but we ground the back to exactly what he wanted. You know, so it, 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 it you know, I, I look at it that way. I yeah. mean, if, if one of the best wedge players in the world ever is doing that, well, I can help. Yeah, you can help anybody with a I conversation. I can help anybody with a conversation because it's about what you do. The other thing, you know, I mentioned earlier, we've got a play guarantee. Yes. You know, hey, this is, you know, from what you're telling me, you need a little more bounce. You go out and play a few rounds with this and you let me know. You let me know if you need a little bit here or a little bit there. I mean, I had a, had a, had a guy, uh, actually was one of guys that Aaron takes care of all the time. And he just loves playing just with a 56 degree wedge. Mm. And got him a little more bounce. And Aaron's like, hey, he goes we're going to get you a little more bounce. If you don't like the way it feels, you just bring it in, have Larry buzz it on the wheel. And so he, he came in, buzzed it on the wheel. He sent me a text and he goes, man, I love the wedge. I just shot, I just shot 67 with it. Feels great. That'll work. Yeah. But, but it, it's that conversation. Yeah. So you can, you know, in, in, I like the surface because you can actually feel if you get somebody to open it up, it's like hitting it off a tight lie on the golf it is, course. Yeah. You know, I mean, hey, fluffy lies are fluffy lies are tough anywhere. Yeah. Okay. But it gives you some feel, it gives you some understanding. What is your technique like? What do you do? And that really helps us. So it to me it gets us it gets us eighty five percent down the road with somebody mm-hmm. indoors. And then let them go out and try it outdoors and yeah. see what they do. You know, one of the things that, you know, one of the things that I see is people tend to get a little bit too handsy. There's yeah, not enough, I'm, I'm guilty there, of this. There's not enough, there's not enough body rotation. Um, there's honestly, there's some great, uh, there's some great videos with Lee Trevino and Parker McLaughlin, who's the short game chef on Instagram, talking about body rotation, talking about moving. I mean, if somebody really wants to look at that from a short game standpoint, and I, I don't encourage anybody very often to watch Instagram yeah, or yeah. YouTube videos other than my own. 
Yeah, true. Just can't blame him for that. <laughs> um, but these are good. Yeah. These conversations with him and Trevino, because Trevino is an absolutely fabulous wedge player. Oh, yeah. Always has And a character. Been. Yeah, and a character. They're fun to watch. But they really give they really give some insight on, on what to do. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, yeah check them out, because I, yeah. I, I would encourage people. And that's what I see, you know, people that I teach, that there's no body rotation. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you all you know who else has some pretty good Instagram videos is Rocco. He's got some good Rocco. Ones. Rocco's Rocco's yeah, is very get, yep. Rocco's is very yeah, good. He'll be good. Um, but but uh, yeah, but you know, from a wedge standpoint, you know, gap it out. And to me, the one that you really never that that might be an issue is the higher loft. Yeah, one. and that's a, a lot of that's just the how you use it if you're like me and use it for every shot inside right. a 90 yards or whatever right. you know that's a that's obviously about well, the conversation and, and with you know, you. the hard thing too is you know you get a guy sometimes that you know hey okay so he plays plays at a private club bunkers are firm they're shallow there's not a lot of sand so you do a wedge with you do a wedge with not much bounce on the 60. Mm -hmm. well then he goes play somewhere he goes plays a tournament sands fluffy yeah. whatever it's it's not going to work as well yeah. Okay. But that's why I always like if you got a 55 or a 56 in the bag, or vary, even a, even the a 54 in the bag, and, yeah, even a 54 in the bag with more bounce, you can use that, roll that one open and create more bounce and be able to use it there. I mean, I, I still play, I still play the same setup that I've played for 40 years, which is, which is 48, 54, and 60. And the only time I ever go to 60 is if I really need to hit it up in the air yeah. or it's a short bunker shot. Everything else is played pretty much with 54 because I used it, you know, when I grew up, all I had was a 55 degree wedge. Yeah. So that 54 for me to open is very comfortable. So I think you have to, players have to look at their short game and not just grab the 60 every time. Sounds like you're talking to me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, anybody anybody under the age of 30, that's all they do. Is yeah. They just grab the high loft wet, and then you're putting your hands there, and you're doing yeah. all this stuff. That looks exactly and, like what I You're trying to create all this stuff. Hey. I need a playing lesson with Larry Bob. You got other clubs in your bag. <laughs> you can chip with those. Yeah. They are okay to chip with. And, ah, but that. I have a feeling if we played, the, you, there, we'd stop the round for like 10 minutes for you to give one of your. Spiels to me a few no, times. No, we just made. We just need to make. Or sure. you just beat. We me. just need to make sure the beer cart's coming. Around. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. That's fair. Enough. But you know, but you have to. You have to vary what you do. I mean, you you have clubs. You know, and and I was so fortunate learning from Phil Rogers and Phil. You know, Phil. First of all, I mean, he'd make you hit every. He'd make you hit every shot around the green. I don't care how short it was or whatever. But you're pitching much first. Yeah. And then you can advance to your next club, and then you can advance to your next club. I'm like getting rattled because thinking because of that. it's about technique. Yeah, and then putting the different club in your hand creates the trajectory. So technique is technique is number one, trajectory is number two, and you don't try to change the trajectory by changing your hand position. You change the trajectory by the club you have in your hand, by the loft you have in your mm -hmm. hand. That simplifies short game. That makes it life easy. Because this game is way too complicated. Yeah. And we is. can make it way too complicated. Yes. And the last thing you want to do is overcomplicate, especially when you've hit two really good shots on a par five and you got a little 40 yard pitch to get it close. And you sit there and go, How in the world did I leave it 25 feet short? Yeah. You know? I've been there. Can't do that. Well, yeah. we've, we've all been there. I've We've all there. done that, and I, you know, I, I, I'm the same way. You know, every once in a while, you're like, you know, I always try to grab the 54, but sometimes it's like, ah, you know what? Let me try this, and then I hit the shot, and I'm like, that was the dumbest thing ever. Mm. But that's that, that that's made, golf. That's you what learn. makes us golfers. Yeah, right. That's golf. You learn. Um, yeah, we're we're coming up on time. I know it's been. Okay. Uh, I know you got to get to league and stuff. But, yeah, I'm doing um, okay. Any but, any other any other questions? I don't think I do. Other than uh, when are we going to play some golf? We got to get that going. soon. Yeah, we Chaska need, Town Course. Yep, I'll give yep. you the home course advantage. Okay, we need to do that soon. Yep. Um, but yeah, you know, it's you know, golf. Golf's such a fun game. It's it's it so is. it's so great. You know, I mine. 
my oldest daughter is so into the game now. She's in medical school. She's in Chicago, and they love to play. And, I, you know, I get text messages all the time about, hey, doing this, doing, you know, what club should I use? Show me, get swing pictures. You and go. You know, and, that, and that's fun. And that's what makes the game, that's what makes the game so mm -hmm. much fun, you know. But you have to come in, you know, and, and you talked about it earlier with, with Kraft and Aaron does it, and we all do it. Come in. And, and let us evaluate your bat. You right. know, don't don't stress out that you got to come in and feel like you, you got to buy, buy something or hey, I need a new set of irons. But we always take a look and go, hey, we got a little extra time. Hit your driver. You know, I'll give you a little insight on this. You know, I'm not going to pressure you to buy a driver today if it's bad. But here's something that can help you. Mm -hmm. Here's a, you know, now especially now with hybrids and the way the ball doesn't spin and. In lofts getting stronger you really have to, you really have to look at the flight of your golf ball and the flight of your golf ball might not be your problem you might not just have the right implement in your hand to hit it yeah you know and if i can't get my six iron in the air and i'm hanging might be back. time for a six hybrid well yeah but then you know now you start hanging back and you start hitting shots and you in now the ball starts going everywhere Okay. And your swing. Yeah, I mean, the one, opposite of what we want. One of the things, one of the things I saw most early on, you know, was a pretty decent player growing up, and was a club pro. And then when I started working for Wilson, you start watching players hit drivers, okay? And they would, you know, and this is we're back in the Woodwood days. Metal was just coming out. This is eighty four, eighty five, and you watch players hit driver, and you realize how important loft is okay because they would hit a drive and you would think it's beautiful and they would re re reject it oh can you take some loft off this or do you have something else with a little less loft? do you have something with a little more loft Okay, they picked it up in a minute because back then there was no numbers, yeah. and it was it's all, all about it was what all, the flight looked. Yeah, like. it was all about ball flight, and drivers are really important. Okay, we've also come to find now that that last wedge in your bag it's important to have the correct loft for your short game, but the most important club in your bag to have the correct loft is your putter, because you can't see ball roll, you don't see launch angle. Yeah. See launch angle from a driver. You see launch angle from a wedge. See it from a seven art. I don't see it from the putter. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that putt. I don't know if that putt's good or bad. You know, Rocco brought in the session that Ro Rocco brought a couple putters in that couple companies had sent him and to try. And all I can tell you is I have never seen in thirty five years seen Rocco hit a putt that didn't have a little bit of draw spin on it, and both of these putters had cut spin. And he looks at me and he goes, "What do you think?" I go, "Got a place in your garage for those? Because that's where that's where they're going." <laughs> and I won't mention the, I won't mention the manufacturer, but it, they just didn't fit him. Yeah, interesting. He, he looked at. I mean, he he's like, "Oh, I hit that one great." He looked up at the numbers. He's like, "I can't do this, can I?" I go, "No, <laughs> no, the ball. You're going to read greens differently. Everything's going to change if now all of a sudden where you normally have about eight. Eight to ten RPMs of hook spin, you got eight to ten RPMs of cut spin, and Paul's not going to break yeah. the way you expect it. So it's really important to do that. And you know, like I had a, I usually have a bunch of putter fittings on Tuesday. Like I tell people, I mean, we're trying to do a perfect thing on an imperfect surface. Mm -hmm. You need the best tool you can to do this. Yes, you're trying to go over ball marks, spike marks. Maybe the green wasn't cut that day. Maybe you're playing and there's some impressions on the green because it's soft. I mean, we got to create we got to create the steamroller to get past all that stuff to give you a chance to make the putt. Yeah, you know, that's, it, uh, yeah, that's. I mean, and I, it's every putter fitting, and I know we've done a few just with myself and my new putter, but you get all this information, and then you get the insight from Larry and the fitter, and it 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 truly does. Again, you don't have to buy the club. You don't have to buy anything. It's not a mandatory part right. of the fitting, but getting dialed in is a, is a big deal. So um, yeah, it's yeah. A, yeah. If you're if you're serious about playing, and you really want to improve, 
knowing what you have, knowing what you have in your bag is is really key. Yeah, really exactly. key. There's too and there's too many. You know, uh, somebody asked me one time and they said, "Hey, we'll finish with this." And they said, "Hey, you know, how is it? How is it working at Second Swing now?" I said, "It's fantastic." Well, you worked for Titleist for 19 years and it was great. I said, "Yeah," but when somebody came in, I only had one brand yeah, to that's fit true. them with. Right. Yeah. So I had to make sure I had to make sure, you know, and do some things to get that brand in their bag. I got every brand. Now. Yeah. I got every ball flight. I got every. I got le- I got drivers that go left. I got drivers that go right. And drivers that fly high and low. I got all these different. Cha- I mean, you got everything you need. I got everything I need. Yeah. I mean, it really is. It really. I, I don't want to say the word easy, but it really makes the fitting that much better yeah because you have all these things to try i mean you look at tour players bags you know they're they're playing a ping driver but they might have a tailor-made three wood or they you know so it, it's hard to get a guy into yeah we've had that we've had that conversation yeah. before about yeah rarely is the right fit the right. same brand all the way through so i mean it really it really as a player, as someone coming in, as a customer coming in, I mean, you just have you got a whole, you got the whole golf industry available for you to put in, and don't you know, don't come in with a preconceived notion that you know I got to have a full bag of this, right? Because that doesn't that rarely that, is that, that what rarely being, rarely yeah. does that happen. Yep. You know, other than you know, I, I'm I'm close to a full bag of handmade sticks. Well. Handmade sticks. I yeah, know. a little yeah. different story. Yeah. You know, yeah. you might have some some slight bias there. Yeah, but, uh, some slight hey, bias. I got handmade sticks slight in my bias, bag too. But so. you know, yeah. hey, Callaway driver and three wood in the bag. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, golfers get fit. Um, get all the information that you need from your bag. Uh, someone like Larry or any one of our master fitters will take care of you. Get you playing better golf, hitting better shots with better tools, fit for your swing in the bag. So, Larry, thanks for. Take some time on your day off. Not a problem. Uh, to, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna talk go, today. Yep, I'm gonna. I'm no, gonna we'll go bring a course record. I'm gonna go hit. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go hit. I'm gonna go hit some golf balls and uh, have a good day. And uh, yeah, let's yeah. Uh, let's find a time to uh, oh, have this match. You know. Oh yeah. Maybe we need to video. Maybe we need to video mm-hmm. some of it. Yeah. That oh, would yeah. that would be entertaining. We'll do that. All right. All right. Sounds good.